Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to explore the best practices for design and detailing of structural steel elements in Revit 2024. We'll walk through each step, highlighting major actions taken to ensure a comprehensive understanding. Our first step is to set up section views within Revit. This is crucial for visualizing the structural elements of our steel tank accurately. In the previous tutorial, we had placed ribber on footing, columns, and beams for the foundation. We can select on any bar, then right-click, hide in view by category. Go to plan level 3, select any bar, then right-click, hide in view by category. Let me delete the previous section views. Select on any section view, then press delete, then OK. Go to view tab, then select section. We can start from somewhere here to here, then drag the bottom to somewhere here. Hit escape. We can now define our second section. Go to section. Then start from here, going down up to somewhere here, then drag this back up to here. With the views created, we can select each, then edit display options. Double click on the section head to go to view. Change the scale to 1 is to 25, then find detail and wireframe for graphics display. Drag the section box upwards by selecting it by its grip here. Grids can also be moved by selecting, then dragging with the grid point dot. Select on the other visible section view, then right click, hide in view, elements. Select on grid, then right click, override graphics in view, by category. Tick half tone, hit apply, then OK. Select on level and let's apply halftone settings to it as we have done for grids. Hit apply, then OK. Select on building section, then right click, hide in view, elements. We can open the other section view and apply the same view properties. Go to the project browser and scroll to section then double click to open section 2. Change the scale to 1 is to 25, detail to fine level, then wireframe. Select the section view then drag it up to somewhere here. Select this section view then right click, hide in view, elements. Select the section view then right click, hide in view, elements. Select on level grids then right click, override graphics in view by category, then check halftone. Hit apply, then OK. Now, let's proceed to place our steel columns. We'll be using 100 by 100 by 4 millimeters square hollow section for this purpose. Select column. Verify your placement is vertical column. Then change from depth to height. Go to load family. Browse to your metric library. Select any folder, then type S. Scroll to structural column. Steel. Then select on SHS family, then hit open. In the family type box, scroll till you find 100 by 100 by 4 millimeters, then press OK. We can place our columns by using at grid options. Click on at grids, then select grid 2, then this grid, this grid, and this grid. Then hit finish. Press escape to exit the command. Go to 3D view to see our columns. Here are the steel columns which we have designed. To duplicate to other levels, select on one column, then right click, select all instances visible in view, then copy to clipboard. Click on paste, then paste to selected levels. Select level 5 and 6, then click OK. We have now added columns to the other levels. 
Next, we'll add the base plate to our columns. These base plates provide a stable foundation for the support columns and distribute load effectively. We are using 300 by 300 by 15 millimeters base plates to ensure adequate support. Before we can add our base plates, we first should check our connection settings. Connection settings can be located in two tabs. At the steel tab, at this down arrow besides connections here. At the structure tab, then select the down arrow here, then click on it. In the structural connection settings box, we can select all by selecting one, then click all, then add, then press OK. Go to connection and click on it. Click to bring the list. Here, on search, type base plate and select it. Select on any steel column then click anywhere on your working space or press escape. Wait for it to load. We can now zoom at the column base by using the middle mouse button. Now that our base plate is in place, it is essential to modify its parameters to meet our specific requirements. Go to Edit Type in Properties box, then Edit according to the drawing specification in the description box for download link. The thickness should be 15 mm. Go to Plate Thickness and Insert 15. For Layout, change to Total, then go to Base Plate Dimensions. In Plate Length, change to 300 and Plate Width to 302. For Plate Corners, leave as it is. In anchors and plates, change anchor type. Scroll and look for holding down bolts. Change anchor diameter to 20 mm. Anchor grade to 8.8. .8. Anchor diameter should be 20 mm here. 8.8 .8 NAW. Anchor length of 300 is OK or you can change from here. You can preview the base plate from here in 3D. For hole tolerance definition, leave as variable, give a tolerance value of 2. Check the create hole only box, then type 22 as the hole diameter. Click outside, then uncheck create hole only. Now the base plate holes are 22mm with 20mm bolts. Go to washer plates. Check create washer plates. You can view the plate in the preview besides here and even rotate too. Check create washer plates here. Change thickness to 5. Size to 35. Rotate in the preview box to see the plates. You can add the size to 50, then go to anchors parallel width. For intermediate distance, type 180. Here in anchor parallel flange, change to 182 for intermediate distance. Now in the preview, the bolts are placed with the specified parameters. For welds, Leave as it is. There are other settings under stiffeners and plates like leveling plate. For this project, I will leave it as it is. Even for holes, then press OK. Click on Apply, then OK. In the 3D view, right click then select Repeat Structural Connection. Select another column, then hit Escape. Right click again, then select Repeat Structural Connection. Select another column, then left click. Repeat the same for the last steel column. With this, we are done with the base plate connection for this project. Go to Section View. As you can see, our plate has been modeled very good. Finally, Let's add the top plant beams to our steel tank structure. For this, 
we'll be using a combination of 100 by 100 by 5 and 70 by 70 by 5 square hollow section main and secondary beams. We can go to our top plan level 6. Go to project browser and double click on level 6 to open it. Change the scale to 1 is to 25, detail to fine, graphics to wireframe. In the structure tab, click on beam here, then go to load family. Browse to metric library, then go to structural framing, still, then scroll to SHS section, then click open. Here, load 70 by 70 by 5 and hold control key and select 100 by 100 by 5, then press OK. Go to edit type. Scroll to identity data and in type mark, edit to secondary beam for the 70 by 70 beam and then click apply. We can resize using this grip line here. Next, we can go to type and choose 100 by 100 section. Then in type mark, type main beam. Then press apply, then OK. Go to load family and select RSA section, then click open. In this box, select 60 by 60 by 5 type, then press OK. Here, we can select on any beam which we have loaded. First, select on the 100 by 100 by 5 section. In properties, set start end and end cut back to zero, and Z justification to bottom. We can now go to the working space and place our main beams. Start from this grid point here up to this point here. Place the other beam from this grid point here up to somewhere here, then press escape. Go to steel tab, then select plate. Select rectangle in draw. Left click to start then left click again to finish then press escape. The shape should have 300 by 300 on all sides in dimension. Click finish using this green tick. Go to properties to change the thickness of the plate to 10 millimeters. Expand structural. Change thickness to 10 then click apply. Select the move command, then find the midpoint of the plate and move it to the grid intersection of the column. We can go to section V1, then zoom to view the plate. Select the plate, then use copy tool. Pick this point at the bottom to the top here, then press escape. Select on the beam, then in properties, scroll to find Z offset value and type 20. Then press apply. Now the beam has been moved 20 millimeters up, which is the thickness of the two plates. To copy the two plates on the other side, select them both, then click on the copy tool. We can select on a point here, up to this point here, then press escape. Go to plan view level 6 after selecting both pairs of plates. Then copy them from grid C to grid B, then press escape. Select on the beam, then confirm the value of the Z offset. Select the other beam, then type here 20, then click apply. Ensure that the plate thickness is 10 millimeters as you can see. In section view, we can zoom to the top to see how the beam and the plates are positioned. Go to 3D view, and here are our steel elements. 
you can rotate with the middle mouse button and shift key. Go back to plan view to add the other beams. In level 6 plan view, go to the structure tab then select beam. Click here then choose 70 by 70 section. Scroll to Z offset value then type 120 and click apply. We can start placing our beams from this intersection of the grid D to grid A. From here to here. From here to here. From here to here. From here to here. And finally from here to here. If we zoom to where the horizontal and vertical beams meet, you'll notice that the main beam has been cut to the edge of the vertical beam. In 3D view, we see our beams are placed perfectly on top of each other. To lengthen the beams, go to Section View, Properties, then scroll to Start Join Cutback and type 70. Add a minus sign to make it minus 70, then click Apply. Also for the start join cutback, change to minus 70 and click apply. Now the beam spans well and the end top beams are aligned properly to the main beam. Go to level 6 and here, this beam goes from end to end according to the plans. We need to change the same values for the lower beam too. Select it, then go to start join cutback and type minus 70. And also for the end joint cutback, type minus 70, then click apply. Finally, we can draw a steel plate where the tank shall rest. To do so, go to the steel tab, then select plate. Go to steel tab, then select plate. Select the rectangle sketch. Then start from this end here up to the bottom right end here. Then click finish. In the properties box, change the thickness to 4, then click apply. Go to section view, then select a line tool. Select this top reference of the beam. Then select the bottom reference of the plate. We can view the model in 3D. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more tutorials. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.